You can see Donald Trump had a visit from Kanye West and white supremacist and Holocaust denier Nick Fuentes over the weekend. Hi, I'm Johnny Mac with your Daily Comedy News. Stephen Colbert said, I can't imagine having dinner with someone so disgusting. And you have no idea which of those three guys I'm talking about. Jimmy Kimmel said, you know, it's a bad sign when Kanye West is only the third most controversial person at your dinner table. Some details from Jay Leno's return to stand up the other night. This from Yahoo. Jay said, the National Enquirer got the story all wrong. They said I was in the hospital because Nancy Pelosi hit me in the head with the hammer. That's not what happened. We got two shows tonight, regular and extra crispy. And he said, I never thought of myself as a roast comic. Jay was asked by reporters if anyone inspired his return to comedy. Jay Leno said, I was in the hospital for a few days and now I'm back again working. People do this every day. What gave me the strength? I'm a comedian. There's no strength. You just tell stupid jokes. Jay's openers were Arsenio Hall and longtime friend Jimmy Brogan. Jay wore a dark suit with his traditional signature denim shirt underneath. Yahoo says facial scoring was barely visible with some redness noticeable on one side of his cheek. Glad to see Jay's doing okay. Adam Sandler was awarded the Performer Tribute Award at this week's 32nd Annual Gotham Awards in New York City. I've never heard of these awards, and I grew up in New York City, and then suddenly this week I saw lots of press about these awards. Who knows? Maybe I just missed it the first 31 times? Adam Sandler gave a speech he claimed had been written by his daughters. I told my daughters Sadie and Sonny, who were 16 and 14, that I didn't write a speech, and they said phrases like, rude and you're mean. Daddy's effing tired. Daddy works hard. Calm down. They were like, can we write your speech, Daddy? The hilarious Adam Sandler then slipped into a southern drawl, thanking the Gotham Awards for the award and continuing an idea that the speech had been written by his kids. I won't do the drawl here. Adam said, dear, well-dressed dignitaries, highly educated hipsters, and various other plus ones of the Gotham Awards, thank you for giving our daddy, Mr. Adam Sandler, this prestigious lifetime, all-time, primetime, GOAT Achievement Tribute Award. While Daddy is with you tonight, we're doing everything we're not allowed to do when Daddy's home, like eat his yodels or try on his Spanx or, dare we say, laugh out loud at Ben Stiller movies. The last time Daddy caught us chuckling away at the Meet the Parents trilogy, he immediately stormed into the room he calls the Screaming Room, which we just call the Shower, and bellowed out the phrase, Only the Sandman makes people laugh. F every other comedian. Boy, Adam, I really hope your teenage daughters did write this speech. Adam went on to discuss his rare good films like Uncut Gems, of course, the best of the Adam Sandler movies. Adam said, many intellectuals have stated that Daddy did these so-called artsy-fartsy movies to push himself as an actor and human being in an attempt at some heavy-duty, much-needed soul-searching. But we as children know he did it for a much more tangible reason, to one day be invited to the Gotham Awards, where he can longingly glaze at at least 10 different tables and say just how many effing movies did A24 produce this year. Hilarious. Richard Lewis will return to Curb Your Enthusiasm next season. Richard tweeted, I'm back shooting Curb. I'm a lucky cat to be with my oldest pal who just so happens to be a genius. Don't tell him I called him that or he'll mock me to my grave. A 22-year ride so far. Richard Lewis only appeared in one episode in season 11 of Curb. He had spent time away from the show, recovering from multiple surgeries on his back and shoulders. Gianmarco Ceresi, remember that name? I saw him up at Montreal Just for Laughs at the New Faces show, and he crushed it. He's at the Stress Factory in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Five shows tonight through the third. Gianmarco said, I heard it's big, so I'm feeling it out. Any club that books me, I respect their booker tremendously. The Connecticut Post says his appeal is interesting. A dash of Mulaney here, a little Maniscalco there. Gianmarco said, I'm Italian, but I'm more Jewish. That's a two-hour set right there. Well, does his stand-up have anything in common with his popular podcast called The Downside? No. (laughs) People just call in and complain. They don't have to tell me how they're blessed and all these things. Come on and tell me what you're unhappy about. Your family life, your personal life, your career, things of the world that need to stop. People like it. They feel like they can come on there and be themselves, and that's the goal. In his current act, I don't talk about COVID. I'm sick of COVID. There's nothing to talk about. What am I going to talk about? How I ate the same meal for a year straight? I touch on it briefly, but I move on. I think in the very beginning, people had clearly forgotten how to behave in public spaces as a group, but now we're in a sweet spot. They're happy to be out. They're finally off Zoom. I did a lot of shows on Zoom. When a joke didn't work, I couldn't tell if the Wi-Fi wasn't working or the joke wasn't. It was a constant struggle. But people are excited and they're appreciative. They're like, I haven't laughed in a long time. I asked him if he'd be commuting home to New York City after these shows. And he said, I'm not commuting for New York for these five shows. I'm the worst driver you've ever seen. I failed my driving test six times, so I'll be staying put in Bridgeport. So I've been on a kick to grow the YouTube channel, Daily Comedy News. Why don't you pop over there and subscribe?
And I've been posting these. They're called YouTube Shorts. So I've been taking the individual stories and making like really quick down and dirty videos about them. And they're doing like really well. And, you know, the more you get out there, you get more comments. Here's one from Nathan who commented on uh, the video short I made about Patton Oswalt saying Elon Musk wasn't funny. Nathan wrote, you ask people to tell you a joke he said, and you say Elon demanded us to see him as funny? When has he ever said that? You don't even know Elon or what he does all day or what he says. I'm almost slipping in a half-ass angry Jerry Seinfeld here. Maybe I'll back up here. You don't even know Elon or what he does all day or what he says. You claim to know he never does anything funny or interesting. How do you know he's like that every day? Nathan asks, did Elon fire you recently? I wrote back, I'll pass this along to Pat Oswalt when I see him. I don't know, man. I'm just reading a story. I'm the writer on a podcast called Palace Intrigue. We talk about the royal family. What I mean by talk about the royal family is most days we cover the Meghan Markle gossip. Meghan has a podcast herself, and this week's guests included Trevor Noah. You don't hear much about Trevor Noah lately, huh? Trevor spoke to Meghan about the shooting of his mother, Patricia, at the hands of his stepfather. He said he and his mother relied on each other, and he was suddenly man of the house. I remember what my mom saying to me when I was very young. She said, remember, you can be the head of your household as a man without owing a cent more than your woman said you can earn. Nothing. Nick Muhammad plays Nate on Ted Lasso. He's also a comedian. The Guardian asked him, since appearing as Nate on Ted Lasso, you must get recognized more on the street. Nick said, it's a weird old thing getting recognized and definitely something I'm still getting used to. Lots of people are pretty angry with Nate, too, given how the last season of Ted Lasso ended. So managing that's been fun. The strangest encounters are almost always in Richmond, where the show is set. But he's lived there since 2014, way before the show. So he says, now it looks like I'm hanging out there just to get spotted. Toast of Tinseltown, starring Matt Berry, has won an award. I guess in the Queen's English, and I don't mean Queen Elizabeth, I mean the borough of New York City where I'm from, I would pronounce the award the Rose d'Or Award. I guess French people would say it the Rose d'Or Award and say it a little better in French than I just said it. Anyway, that one, it won an award for best comedy and if you've never seen toast of london toast of tinseltown's a sequel series or another season of toast of london that revolves around matthew berry's character Stephen toast who's a voiceover artist a very funny show let me see if that's streaming anywhere you there's a website called just watch that tells you where things are i don't think tinseltown is aired in the states yet i've seen it don't ask questions expressvpn.com Toast of London is streaming on BritBox now. I watched it. It was up on Netflix for a while. Toast of Tinseltown doesn't appear to be airing anywhere right now. That sucks, but hopefully the award will make someone air it. Anyway, on winning the award, Matthew Berry said, Thank you very much indeed. I'm really sorry I can't be there in person. I'm in Canada until the end of the year filming being a vampire. <laughs> That's right. You know Matt Berry from what we do in the shadows. And from MMA News, say it with me. No, it's your home for MMA news. What do you think I was going to say? UFC welterweight Kevin Holland has a pitch for the UFC. He wants them to do comedy night. Recently, UFC Fight Pass held a comedy special that featured some of the UFC's biggest stars, including Frankie Edgar and Sarah McMahon. Now, Kevin Holland tweeted, Say UFC, Dana White, I know I'm buggy, but I want to be in the UFC comedy night. Add my guy Jamal Hill and Derek Lewis. We'll take the February show Black History Month. Bring in Kevin Hart and Mike Epps. Snoop Dogg can be the host. Boy, he's really thought this through and he even has suggests for judges. And that's your comedy news for today. Follow the show for free on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Audio version on YouTube. See you tomorrow.